It's another Mat Day here with Teacher Jenny. Join me for another discussion and another topic for hypothesis testing with small sample this time. We have our problem here. It is assumed that the average grade of a certain population in math is mu equal to 90. In a study conducted by a researcher, a sample of n equal to 16 people had an average grade of 80 with a standard deviation of 15. Is the group significantly different from the regular population? So we have to use alpha or the level of significance, which is equal to 0.10. So first thing first, we are going to start with our first step. We are going to state the hypothesis. So again, when you state the hypothesis, you are going to locate your parameter. And this time, the parameter is the average grade of a certain population in math is mu equal to 90. So that's the entire parameter. So we can now write our null hypothesis. This is h sub 0, where you've got their mean is equal to 90. And then alternative hypothesis uh, alternative hypothesis there that would be with the mean but this time since we s we are going to test out whether they have significantly different from the regular population then that would simply mean that we have that one as not equal to 90 so that will be our hypothesis let's now move on to our next step so now Step will be determining the appropriate test to be used. So in order for you to be guided on what test to be used for this one, whether it's going to be Z-test or T-test, you will be following the diagram in determining your type of test. So first, we're going to consider our sample size. Sample size is 16, so that's small. And that is not greater than 30, so it's a no for this one here. Since that is a no, then we need to know whether we've got there the population variance or the population standard deviation as known or unknown. So looking up on your example there, there is no mention about your population standard deviation or the variance there. So that is a no. And that would lead to t-test. So we are now using our t-test on the test statistic. So we are choosing the t-test for this problem. So let's now move on to the next step. Step three here, we need to determine the critical value. So using the t-table because we have t-test, so we are using the t-table. So how to determine the critical value here, you are going to consider your level of significance, which is 0.10. And of course, you need to know the type of test, whether it's going to be one-tailed test or two-tailed test. So again, you will be determining that one based on the alternative hypothesis. So again, your null was mean is equal to 90, and your alternative was mean is not equal to 90. So since the alternative hypothesis there contains the not equal to symbol, that means to say that that is two tails because we're considering the values which are lower than 90 and greater than 90 when we say not equal to. So we are now on two tails. And of course, we need information on the DF. Take note, DF is just equal to n minus 1. So n there is 16. So df is 15. So we have those information. And we are now ready to look for our critical value. So the t value there, we just have to follow the two tails. And then alpha is 0.10 there. And then we have df, which is equal to 15. So get their intersection. So you move across and then we move down. This is the value that we're looking for. So we have 1, 
five three as the value for your critical value. But since this is two tailed, that means to say we have a plus and a minus on your one point seven five three or positive negative on one point seven five three. So that's your value of your critical value for that t test. Now next one is for us to set our condition for this one. So let's try to plot that one on our distribution. So we have positive negative 1.753. So take note, we have, sorry, I wrote Z. That's supposed to be T because that is T test. So T sub C there, that will be equal to positive negative 1.753. So we will be locating that value there. That will be somewhere in here, which is closer to our 2. So this is my positive 1.753, and this is my negative 1.753. So again, your rejection region will always be located on the tail part. So this is your rejection region. And also, this is also your rejection region. So this would simply mean that if your computed value for the test statistic later on will be within the shaded portion, we automatically reject our null hypothesis. So we will be setting our condition on when to reject the null hypothesis. We have there if your Z sub, sorry, I keep on writing Z, sorry, it should be T. Your T sub T is greater than, so I'm starting off on my right tail. If that value for the test statistic computation will be greater than positive 1.753, that means to say this part here will all be going to be rejected. So meaning to say, if T sub T there is greater than 1.753, automatic, we reject the null hypothesis. But still, we need to consider also this part here that is going to be with the OR because you need to choose between which of those um, tail are you going to have your computed value for the test statistic later on. So we have or T sub T here will be less than, sorry, I should put equal to there, sorry on that one. So T sub T there is less than or equal to 1.7, negative 1.753. So that means to say we reject HO. So this is now the basis later on of us in determining what will be our decision for that problem. So let's now move on to the next one. So we are now on step four. We are going to compute for the test statistic and take note we're using the t-test here. So we have our formula to follow is t sub t that will be equal to x bar minus our population mean over the sample standard deviation over the square root of n. So as you can see there, that is similar to the formula with the z-test. But instead for the population standard deviation, we're using the sample standard deviation here. So let's know all the given that is related to that formula. We have x bar here that will be equal to this is now the average which is attached or coming from our sample, sample size. So we have here the average grade of 80 that is our sample mean. So that's 80. And then we have our population mean. Population mean will be taken from our hypothesis declared. So we have also here given that is 90. Next, we need to know our standard deviation for the sample. That is 15. And lastly, we need our N, which is equal to 16. So plugging in, we have our T sub T, that will be equal to X bar will be 80 minus your population mean, which is 90. And then we divide that one with our S, 
or the standard deviation there, which is 15. And we're dividing that standard deviation with our square root of 16. So plugging that one in your calculator, we have our t sub t there value as equal to negative 2.67. So that is our t sub t. That's negative 2.67. So that means to say we are now ready to decide as to what we can make up based on our um, T test or T, T sub T result and so with our critical value. So let's try to put them together in one single distribution curve. Okay, we are now on our step five. And again, step five, we are going to do the decision making, but First, we are going to plot our critical value and so with the computed value for the test statistics. So we have here T sub C for the critical value that is equal to positive negative 1.753. And then we also have our T sub T. This is the computed value for the test statistic, which is negative 2.67. So plotting that one on your curve, we have our negative 1.753, that will be somewhere here. And then our positive 1.753, that is somewhere here. So automatic, this one is our rejection, regen. And of course, if the value of your T sub T there is located on those shaded area, automatic will be rejecting our null hypothesis. So let's try to locate T sub T. T sub T here is negative 2.67. That is somewhere in this portion here, more likely. So that is located on that shaded area. So automatic will be rejecting our null hypothesis. So we say since negative 2.67 is less than negative 1.753, then we have to reject null hypothesis. And then we can conclude. So we can write our conclusion here based on the problem there. So therefore, So since we're rejecting our null hypothesis, meaning to say we're accepting our alternative there, that the alternative there is not equal to 90. So automatic will be just copying this one here. So therefore, the group is significantly... different from the regular population. So that is now your conclusion based on that decision that you've made. So that is how you do your hypothesis testing. And I hope you learned something from me. Again, please subscribe and like and share this video to your friends who need help as well. And of course, you may try to click on the, the notification bell so that you will be updated on my latest video. So I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.